ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. The San Diego Unified School Board now has a plan for students to return to school in the fall, but that plan gives parents the option whether their child should return to class or continue distance learning. Good evening, I'm Steve Atkinson. And I'm Kimberly Hunt. ABC 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo walks us through what the school year will look like. School starts on August 31st, but whether students start in the classroom or online is up to their parents. Voting unanimously, the San Diego Unified School Board voted on a plan giving families options for returning to school for the next school year. The plan in place means all students will return to in-person learning for the full day of class every day, not a staggered schedule. All in-person learning is subject to federal and local health guidelines, like wearing a mask, six feet social distancing, and frequent hand washing. But I'm really happy to hear that they're looking at bringing back um you know, full day school without the staggered schedules as an option. I think that's awesome. Andrea Gallegos is a parent of a fourth grader at Rowan Elementary. I just want her to be able to have the experience of going to school and enjoying her life and socializing with her friends. If a parent feels their child is not ready to go back to in-person learning, they can continue distance learning online, something the district is calling distance learning 2.0, an improvement to the current online learning in place. The board read several public comment messages from concerned parents during the meeting. As long as there are no vaccines or proven treatments for COVID-19, I do not feel comfortable sending my children to school. Please have a distance learning plan plan ready. The board voted to move forward with this plan despite only having enough funding for only half of the school year. The second half is dependent on federal funds. Without the additional funding, all students would return to online learning for the second part of the year. I mean, of course, we're worried about our health. We want her to be safe. But I do think that, you know, as long as they're doing the, the safe practicing measures, I, I think that's all we can really ask. Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. New at 11 o'clock, the mountain lion that scratched a four-year-old boy at Blue Sky Ecological Reserve has been killed. The attack happened Friday afternoon while the four-year-old was walking in the reserve with his family. He was scratched on the back and thigh but should make a full recovery. Wildlife officials say the animal was captured and DNA tests confirmed it was the mountain lion responsible for the attack. It was a two-year-old adult female weighing about 70 pounds. Police in Texas are looking for the gunman who shot a person inside a Dallas mall tonight. The third floor of Galleria Dallas was evacuated after shots were fired at the food court. Witnesses say two people were arguing when things escalated. One person was rushed to the hospital with injuries. No word on their condition tonight. Officers say that they are now looking at surveillance video as they search for a suspect. President Trump signed an executive order that creates more oversight in police departments. The president said it was part of a promise he made to the families of victims of recent police violence. All Americans mourn by your side. Your loved ones will not have died in vain. We are one nation. We grieve together and we heal together. The order creates a database to track instances of police misconduct. It also encourages but does not require law enforcement to involve social workers on calls concerning homelessness, mental illness and addiction. The president says he wants Congress to pass additional police reform legislation. Today's order addresses some issues that Democrats called for in their bill, including a ban on chokeholds. Trump says the only exception is when an officer's life is in danger. Senate Republicans plan to introduce their own police reform proposal tomorrow. While the president's new order changes national standards on use of force, San Diego, San Diego police say that they already vowed to make these changes weeks ago. San Diego City Council member Monica Montgomery, who represents District 4, is a longtime civil rights advocate and attorney. She says the president's call for more training is a must. We do need to go from um, kind of a soldier-like mentality or warrior-like mentality to more of a community-based uh, type mentality for officers. The San Diego City Council just authorized $4 million to establish an office for race and equity. Montgomery says it will play an important role in policing the police and level the playing field for people of color, from hiring practices to a community equity fund. 
And a local San Diego leader hosted a virtual town hall to talk about policing and race in America. I consider myself a civil rights Democrat. Um, I think that, uh, that that should be part of our um, American ethic, and um, I'll always fight for that. That's Representative Scott Peters. He hosted a Facebook Live along with other Congress members tonight. The discussions broke down the tragedy of George Floyd's death, which led to the nationwide protest on police brutality. Peters also spoke about meeting with Dr. Martin Luther King's family and how that shaped his views on civil rights. The congressman says he believes the Justice and Policing Act will encourage better policing practices in the future. An update tonight on the Las Vegas police officer who has been fighting for his life since being shot in the head at a protest following the death of George Floyd. The family of 29-year-old officer Shea Michelonis says he is now paralyzed from the neck down and no longer able to speak. Officer Michelonis was shot on June 1st and remains on a ventilator at the hospital. Las Vegas area residents have been invited to sign banners with messages of support for the officer. A GoFundMe has been set up for his family. It's raised nearly $500,000. We have a link to that on our website, 10news.com. And police officers in Kentucky say they are under attack. They blame Louisville city leaders for tying their hands on how they control protesters. These officers refuse to abandon the citizens in this city the way your elected officials have. The crowd gathered today to show support for those officers. Police say that they are working long hours and being spit upon and shot at. Recent unrest has also led to crime, including the vandalism of the police officers memorial downtown. With fallen officers names on it was vandalized due to the stand down order. That's a slap in the face to every former, current and fallen officer and their families. My son's names on that wall. Some are calling on the city's mayor to step down, who has acknowledged police are in a difficult position. And the San Diego LGBTQ Community Center is banning armed and uniformed law enforcement officers at all of their facilities and events. In a statement, the center's CEO says the move is not about good or bad individual officers, but rather a systemic problem in law enforcement that devalues black lives and creates an environment in which our black community does not feel welcomed. The only exception to their new rule will be when they have an emergency and they need help. Chief David Nislight responded this evening saying that he is extremely disappointed with that decision. The statement goes on to say, quote, banning people because of their profession and their desire to serve the community is counter to the message of inclusion that they've always stood for. The decision to exclude uniformed police officers should be reconsidered. Turning now to the coronavirus and here are the latest numbers. The county reported another 120 cases today. That brings the total to just over 9,700. There were also another three new deaths. That brings that total to 323. A new forecast model from the University of Washington predicts as many as 200,000 people in the U.S. could die from coronavirus by October. It's partly due to states reopening and large protests as many cities are now seeing a rise in cases. But as ABC's Rena Roy reports, there is hope out of the U.K. Health officials warn we have a long road ahead in the fight against COVID-19. At least 20 states and Puerto Rico now seeing an increase in infections and 14 have a rise in hospitalizations, including record highs in North Carolina, Texas and Arizona, where doctors are concerned about hospital capacity. There's very few hospital ICU beds in southern Arizona right now. Florida seeing its highest number of new cases in a single day, more than 2,700 in 24 hours. In Miami, officials have halted the next phase of reopening just days after beaches there opened up. Kat Layton says she and at least 12 of her friends tested positive after going to a Jacksonville Beach bar last weekend. If we're not paying attention to what is actually going on and we're just kind of opening things up, we're going to contract it and we're going to kill people in our own community. Governor Ron DeSantis insists the higher numbers are likely due to more testing. We really expanded the drive through and the walk up sites. And now we have pop up sites at retail locations. And, and that's thousands and thousands and thousands of tests a day. 
Amidst those new grim numbers, a possible breakthrough. Doctors at UK's Oxford University say they have the first drug that improves survival rates in the sickest COVID-19 patients. A low-cost common steroid called dexamethasone was shown to cut the risk of death by a third for patients on ventilators and reduce deaths by 20 percent for those on oxygen. We've improved their chances of coming off that ventilator a lot. The drug reduces inflammation and appears to help lungs fight the virus off. Scott Krakauer was in the ER and says it helped relieve his COVID-19 symptoms in just hours. This was like a big, a big difference, a huge difference after I went on the IV uh, steroid um, that I felt. Today's results were so encouraging. British doctors announced they'll start treating patients with the drug immediately. It is different from another virus treatment, remdesivir, which speeds up recovery time but has not yet been proven to improve survival rates. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York.